Hi everyone, it's Ranger Angelina and Sarah here. She's our assistant naturalist at Hi. the Nature Center at Sequoia State Park and she has agreed to be our model today. <laughs> she doesn't know what she's in for. <laughs> so we wanted to come on and talk to you about what you should be wearing when you go out hiking. We greet you at the Nature Center and at that point it's too late. You've already picked out your outfit. A lot of people are wearing things that look great but maybe aren't the best for being outside. And so we have some selections here of what to and what not to wear. Let me turn off my fan. Maybe. And so we have Sarah outfitted in what not to wear to begin with. And so she's wearing our cotton t-shirt. Cute. I designed it. She models it well. And some jean shorts. So this is a typical summer outfit. This is something we would see people wearing at the nature center about to set off on a hike. Don't forget flip flops. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, like at that point it's too late. So we want to help you when you're shopping and planning for your trip to the park or any park uh, to know what to wear. And it's a lot of things that maybe you don't think about. And I've worked in the field for years. Sarah's been outdoorsy her whole life. And so we have suffered and we're hoping that our experiences help you not to suffer as much as we have. So we're gonna start with what she should be wearing. So like I said, this is a cotton blend and then denim. So these are both hot materials and when you start getting sweaty, these are going to retain your sweat and they're not going to help you cool off any faster. Uh, so we're going to opt for something different. For most people, they might think that they should wear a tank top and short shorts because I think the, the less material, the cooler they'll be. But I found in my experience that exposed skin makes you warmer. So we've been experimenting with some different uniform options at the Nature Center, and we've agreed we really like some long sleeve yes. SPF options. And one of the things, so I grew up in tank tops and shorts and going out, and Angelina introduced me to the long sleeve, and at first I was pretty skeptical I was like, okay, I'll take your word for it. But now whenever it's time for us to mow or get out on trails, I automatically reach for the long sleeve because it does pull that moisture away from your skin as well as it protects you from UV rays. So I don't have to worry about so much exposed skin and becoming sunburned. Helps you from getting that farmer's tan. Yeah. Even though that is hot, it's hot. Don't let anyone tell it's you otherwise. In. <laughs> hot girl summer. <laughs> so I have this collection of SPF shirts that I have acquired over the years. So don't feel like you need to have this many options. But this was my uniform <laughs> for years at a time. Let's see. Okay. Ah! <laughs> I'll hold it. So, oh, I'll hold this. And so when you're picking your shirts, you're gonna wanna look for a number of options. One thing is color. So some studies have found that black attracts ticks, <coughs> and then others have found that white attracts ticks. And we've definitely noticed in our truck, like my black purse or anything that black that we have, like black liner at, on the bottom is covered in ticks more than any other surface in the truck. And so I would steer away from black. Also, obviously black absorbs all the other colors. It's hotter to wear. It's harder to see ticks on you when you're colors are the same color as the ticks. Yeah. So a lot of times they say go for neutral colors if you're trying to see wildlife. Um, especially if you're like a big birder, you're going to wear those shades of green that you see. There's like khakis and greens and grays that a lot of people wear, which we wear a lot of that too. But I found um, some of these colors are, are good as well. So middle of the line and you can do print or you can do solid. And there's a few different textures of materials. Um, is anyone else hearing us? Carolyn says her sound's not working. And uh, the Columbia ones I found, so the more expensive brand, I don't like that material as much. Feel that. Yeah, it's rough. So they have uh, the nice pockets on the back with the mesh to allow for ventilation, but they get really wrinkly. And I'm not going to be ironing before I go out in the field. So, I mean, these, these run $60 easily. I have a couple of these. They're the performance fishing gear. That's usually what you're looking for is fishing gear when you're online shopping. 
Um, but I, I don't prefer these. The brand that I prefer is the Magellan brand from Academy. Yeah. And these are like half the cost of the Columbia and some of those other name brands. And this is, this is my favorite, just something about this color. This purple has been my favorite for many years. And they have buttons, and there are women's varieties. I've tried the men's, and I've tried kids, and it, you need the women's if you're, if you're a lady. It's hard to find women's outdoor clothing, so I was really excited to find these because they fit well on your body, and they're not too constricting. Yes. So... Definitely, you're not trying to look cute. You want to be comfortable. You're going to have a much better experience if you're comfortable. One thing that I told the girls when we bought these is a lot of them have Velcro options to hang different things on, so these pockets Velcro. When you wash them, make sure that the Velcro is attached or it will cling to other things in your laundry and ruin them if you're like me and wash everything together. Um, so like I said, this blue and this purple are my favorites and then there's a third material type like these it's almost like a parachute material like a hammock and they're really lightweight it's like what i'm wearing and i like those too they have this like oh this one doesn't have it. it's kind of like ventilation in the back so it has this mesh material inside so you can catch a nice breeze on it <laughs> yeah and so i sometimes do short sleeves i sometimes do long sleeve <coughs> just kind of depending on, on what we're doing, but it really, truly keeps you cooler to wear the long sleeves. It sounds so oxymoronic, I know, but just keeping that direct sun off your skin really helps. I'm a believer. <laughs> okay, so we talked about our tops. You wanna change into this one. So that's a nice gray, good neutral color. You're gonna see ticks if they're on you. You're not going to attract too much heat with a dark color. That's a nice cut too. Yeah, it is. And before I forget, you want to start with your base layers. So your underwear, your bra, you want those to be not cotton. So wear something that's um, a blend that is, oftentimes it's stretchy and that will be moisture wicking and help you cool off faster. If it's cotton, it's gonna stay wet and clingy. So if you're wearing, if you're like, for instance, going kayaking, these are the clothes I wear because they're quick dry. And if you're wearing cotton underwear, it's no help if the rest of your clothing's quick dry. Um, so you can buy quick dry, like um, Patagonia has some quick dry underwear. And I should mention, I am not a fashion expert. I am not a physician and I don't endorse any of these brands. These are just what we have experienced, what we personally like. And so we're not sponsoring anyone or anything. We just want to share what we've learned with you all because it is worthwhile to invest in these staple pieces if you're going hiking um, and so you want to if you're spending your money you want to spend it on quality products but that doesn't always mean the most expensive or those name brands so like I said the Magellan's the one we like so then when you're going with bottoms the biggest mistake is wearing shorts so I have a bunch of different pants and shorts and I do have a few pair of shorts that I like that I'll wear, but not hiking. So if I'm kayaking or on the river, I'll wear SPF shorts that are quick dry, but not for hiking. That's how you get great ticks and chiggers. So if that's what you're looking for, it's not hot girl summer, ticks and chiggers. Farmer's tan is. The uh, eight up legs is in though. No, 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 it's not. The sock line mm -hmm. where the chiggers get you? Yeah, and the underwear line, yeah. no. No, we are wearing pants when we go hiking. If it's 100 degrees, still wearing pants. So here's a pair of Prana. This is a cotton blend. Um, <coughs> this is, is one it? that I like that is good for mid-temperature days. Um, it will keep you warm enough, cool enough. So if it's like 60s, 70s, these are what I'm going for. They have an elastic waistband. I prefer elastic waistbands. If I'm wearing something with a zipper and a snap, I wear a belt because you're going to be moving around. You want your pants to fit you well. Here are several different pairs of shorts that I like. These are Columbia. They're quick dry. And then these are some Patagonia. Those are my favorite. Um, 
and so they have a snap and a zipper. A lot of times I have to be really careful with the snap closure because you're moving around, you're bending, you're getting up and down, and the snaps will snap open. Not what we're going for. So these are Prana, which is, um, they started out as like a yoga brand, but they've really morphed into having a lot of great field clothing. And these are called the Howley. And I have them in gray, khaki, and black. They are my favorite pant that I wear, and they're good in all temperatures. I like these waistbands too, and they have some stretch to them, so when you bend over or squat down to look at something, you're not getting cut in half. And they're, they're the right um, waist, so they're not low cut, but they're not high waisted, so they're a good in-between fit. And like I said, I have them in three colors because I like them so much. <laughs> not because they're worn out, but simply because I wear them so often. And they last a long time too. Mm -hmm. So these are another Prana. This is a jogger, and this has the nice tie front and elastic band in the back, and it's a good length. I wear those year round. And then these I found at um, TJ Maxx or Marshalls, and they're Columbia, and they were on sale. So I always check when I'm at Ross, TJ Maxx, any place like that for um, nice name brands that are on sale. So you ready to go change? Yep. Okay, we're gonna get Sarah changed from cotton and denim <laughs> into something more suited for what we're doing here out on the trails. If you all have any questions, let us know. And this is more targeted towards women because I am a woman and that's the experience I've had. Um, something a lot of people ask for are pants that have a lot of pockets. I'm not a big fan of keeping things in my pocket because it, like if you're keeping your phone or whatever, that's then causing heat. It's making you more sweaty. It's making your pants not fit right because your pockets are bulging. And I prefer instead to have great bags that I carry my things in. Um, big cargo pockets, it just weighs you down and it's a personal preference. So if that's something you're looking for, definitely check that out when you're buying pants. But I like pants that have a more fitted look that are... Um, feminine that have a waistband that sits on your hips so not high waisted and definitely not low cut because you can't do the things you're doing in the field so when you do buy some new clothing um when you take it home and wash it wash it in detergent that's not super scented so we'll cover that later with sunscreen and whatnot but you don't want to have a floral scent or whatever because that's going to attract pests Let's take a look at Sarah. So she has changed into her field pants and her field top, lightweight. And these have sleeves that roll up and it has a button so you can roll them up if you want. But I feel like that constricts me so I always just keep them down. Okay, so once you buy your field clothes and you've washed them, no, <laughs> and you've washed them in a detergent that's not smelly. So even like Drift, like the kids detergent, mm -hmm. or some... Well, Drift has scent to it, so you would have to get like a free and clear, because I wash my kids in Drift because I love the smell. So fine, they have <laughs> unscented um, detergents, especially for people that are allergic to different detergent uh, compositions or scents. So <coughs> you can find unscented easily. And it's not a huge deal, but any step that you can take that's simple like that to prevent ticks, is worth it. And then another thing is this permethrin. So permethrin is something, it's an arthropod, an insect repellent, which is nice when you're looking at things and it says arthropod and it doesn't say repels insects such as ticks, which aren't an insect. Or when you're buying snake boots and it says it protects against poisonous snakes, not a good sign. Snakes are venomous. You're not worried about eating them. That's not the boots protection. So permethrin is something you spray on your clothing, not your body. And it lasts about eight washes. Um, and it has really good instructions on here for how to apply it to your clothing and how to, like, you should wear a mask. You should definitely do it outside, air your clothes outside. And so you should do it once at the beginning of the season and then during the season after you've worn those clothing several times. And this really helps keep the ticks away. And now let's talk about your shoe options. 
So go over there, Sarah, and pick up some shoes. I'm not gonna step down. And let's talk about what you're looking for. <clears throat> so these are just some shoes from my closet and some socks that are things that I found that I like or maybe don't like so much. So if I'm going kayaking or inner tubing in the river, things like that, I'll wear my Chacos or my Keens. Um, I have several pair of both, and so it just depends on if I'm going to get muddy or if I'm wearing my nice field shoes. So you wanna pick up those blue ones. So these have a really nice toe, and that's what I'm going to wear if I am floating the river because you're not going to stub your toe with that great protection, and you can really tighten it down so your shoe doesn't come off in the mud. They might not be the most stylish, but I'm over that. <laughs> I, I saw a girl duct tape flip-flops to her feet one time at the river, so... <laughs> <laughs> Better option than that. Yeah. <laughs> And then uh, when you shop for Keens, there's tons of different styles and colors. These are some of the newer ones, and they have more straps, and the toe's a little smaller. Uh, so those are good if you're in sand or, like, little gravel because you can get that out of your feet pretty easily. The Chacos are popular. I wear them often. Uh, they're great for the beach. I don't wear them. I wear them kayaking but not when I'm doing things where I could stub my toes. They also give you great hand lines. Yeah. <laughs> and you can get the ones with the toe strap, or they make some bigger bands without the toe strap. I thought I'd hate the toe strap, but I had people talk me into it, and I do really actually like it. Um, so let's start with socks. I, again, I had someone suggest wearing wool socks in the summer, and that sounded insane to me until I tried them. And so the purple ones, this is an REI brand, so it's the generic. Uh, I do a lot of REI shopping, and that's a good length for the summertime. And they're nice wool blend. They fit well. They don't feel thick like you would think wool would be. And then the ankle ones. Yeah, so I have a bunch of different colors and a different lengths. These are smart wool, which is, well, this, this actually isn't, is it? Anyway, smart wool is one of my favorite brands, but the ankle padding on this one is awesome. So when you're picking out your hiking boots and you're breaking them in, so that's still an ankle sock. And so if you are wearing shorts or capris, it doesn't look as dumb, but they're still a wool sock. <laughs> And then the Smart Wool, I own a dozen pair of these in varying colors. Those are just my go-to. You can wear them under pants. Obviously, they're great with your snow boots. They're nice and thick, too. Yeah. Good when you're breaking in a new pair of hiking boots. Yes. My hiking boots usually are a size <laughs> bigger or a half size bigger than what I normally wear. So let's start on the far right. I'm a Merrill girl. No particular reason, I've just had luck with them. So these are a Merrill and they're a low cut. So they don't have a lot of ankle support. I got these to wear to work every day. They match my uniform. They look sporty. If I need to go out on the trail, I can, but they're not a clonky big boot. Yeah, and they're that mesh material. And then I really like these Merrills. They're a kind of unique blue color, so they match a lot. And they're waterproof. Uh, they have the mesh. These caused me issue. I wore them on the beach, and they filled with sand. So the bottom's all lumpy with sand, but I can't stand to throw them out. They're my, like, work boot. And they're a little heavier, but still lightweight. They're not, like, a chunky leather boot. These are water-resistant, not waterproof. Yeah. Yeah, they say waterproof, but they're water resistant because that mesh, I mean, yeah. it's not its not really waterproof. So you're going to want to look for that when you're looking for keywords. And then you can spray them. You can um, buy the special different shoe products and spray down so that they don't get stains and so that they are more water resistant. I do really like this boot. This was um, like a Yellowstone hiking boot with that good ankle support when you're bouldering, I'd recommend this. They still sell variations of this style. 
And then this one, my parents bought for me for Christmas this year from REI. This is a different style of Merrill. And these are so lightweight. Like I can't even express how lightweight these are. Um, and they're leather. So I've broken them in nicely. They have the perfect amount of ankle support. And I just, I'm obsessed with them. And it's soft here too. It's not thick like some of the heels that'll wear on you. Yeah, so these like didn't require break-in period. I mean, I will buy these over and over. I, I love them. Um, what else do we need to go over here? So you want to sit down and I'll sure. tell you what to wear. <clears throat> so like I said, this isn't about looking good. This is about being comfortable and taking care of your skin. So pick up the fish print, the, yeah. So this is a Patagonia, it's a buff, or some people call it a gator, and this is SPF. And so this goes around your neck, and I always get sunburnt, like the V on my collar is a point where I get sunburned a lot, and then the back of my neck. And so this goes in front, and also this is masks. Uh, masks are in right now. <laughs> so uh, it's very lightweight, and it's a quick dry material and you have the wind blowing your face, uh, you can pull this up and protect your face from, from that. And then that is a cooling rag. So it's dry right now and you can take it out in the field and pour cold water on it and it cools you down. So that's great like for football games, um, but also just being out. I think this is from Bed Bath & Beyond. It's Endura Cool is the brand and it feels almost like an ice pack. So if you are easily overheated, um, or, or you're going on a really long hike, I recommend carrying one of these with you. It has instructions on it. <laughs> <laughs> and then the gloves. I used to work on the beach every day, all day, and I'm very fair-skinned, and I would get a hand tan, and I would get age spots, and I was, you know, 25 at the time. So these are fingerless SPF gloves, so you can still do anything like use your phone or record notes like I were was um, but protect your skin these are good if you're going kayaking too and you're rubbing from the oars and the paddles depending they're not hot either. yeah they're the moisture wicking and again it keeps the heat off of you <laughs> I love them because your hand the way your hand sits when you're out in the field or you're mowing or whatever the skin is pounding down directly on it and then I have, of course, a bunch of different hats. You can wear whatever you want. So Sarah's going to put her hair up in a ponytail because you want your hair off your neck. I often go <laughs> with the braid or the double braid. That's what I prefer. You can put your hair up in the ponytail so that it fits in the hole of your hat. I, Sarah's not talented enough to braid her hair. <laughs> I have the uh, Indiana Jones hat too that I really like. I have the one that has the flap that goes over the back of your neck, all the embarrassing kinds. Uh, let's, let's look at bags now. So like I said, I worked in the field for many years and I worked sometimes on a, on a boat where you have to carry everything with you for the whole day, worked on beaches. I worked all kinds of locations, so I have all different kinds. Um, you wanna start with the crossbody? So this is a good bag. This is Osprey, which again is a brand I like, so I have many different products from them. And this is good if maybe you're going on a short hike, but you're exploring the park all day, and it has a ton of pockets. And it has some nice padding on the shoulder. So I'll tell you, I've had this so long. This has cell phone, a cell phone pocket. <laughs> Um, by your, cell phone no, this, <laughs> my pink razor fit in there. <laughs> That's how long I've had these bags. We have a couple different colors. I don't think my iPhone will fit in there. No, I, phones have changed. Uh, and that one I think has a hydration, uh, slot so you can yeah, put in your hydration bladder. Here. Yeah. So it's insulated. That's a nice bag. And if you want something that's maybe more feminine or that you can take to the restaurant after, that's a good option. And then I went from the crossbody to this day pack. It's called the Daylight. When you're buying a backpack, they measure the size based on liters. So this is a small pack and 
Uh, this is great for just a short hike and it has some good pockets. And one of the big things that a lot of people don't realize is you want your backpack to fit perfectly. So before you go out, like while you're still at home the night before, have your bag packed and adjust it. So you want the straps right, you want it around your body, you want every little strap that it possesses, they all serve a purpose. So that- Have it low on your back, it'll hurt your back, so you want high and tight. And that will distribute that weight around your body. So this is, if you're going hiking in Oklahoma, this is probably the backpack for you. This one's from Backwoods. It's a locally owned outdoor place. Uh, Metro Shoe Warehouse in Oklahoma also sells some. Okay, next, let's go fanny pack. And by fanny pack, I have multiple. <laughs> I was about to say, which one? <laughs> I love fanny packs. I'm going to start simple. Yeah, so this is... I went into Academy, so Academy is one of my favorite places um, to go shopping for outdoors gear. And I went in and I asked the girl where their fanny packs were and she laughed at me. So I found them on my own. This is just a polka dot one. And this, this I use like if I'm jogging or just going on a walk and I don't need to take any water and it just fits my phone so that I don't have it in my hand. And you can pack chapstick and your keys in there too. And then I upgraded when I was doing field work with squirrels. I was in and out of my car, so I didn't need a lot, but I did need to carry a GPS camera and some various things. And so I upgraded to this, and this is from an outdoor store. I think this is from Cabela's, um, Bass Pro, REI. Sarah's a little so that one holds two water bottles and you can grab that little water bottle if you want. And it, it sits nicely on your body and it's nice and wide so you can fit all kinds of stuff in there. But that water bottle fits perfectly. And I found if you have the water bottle sitting on the front of you, you're more likely to drink it than taking your whole backpack off. It's psychosomatic. Don't show all my goods. <laughs> you never know what you're going to find in there. Right. <laughs> and then the last option, this is if you're going on a really long hike. This is a 35 liter, I believe. This is, I love this backpack. I also use it, it's a 30 liter. I also use it um, if I'm going on an overnight trip. It again has lots of great pockets. The pockets on the side can hold a water bottle but this one I bought a hydration pack for. And just like with the fanny packs and holding your water, the hydration pack has this cord and then it has a magnet so that the mouthpiece is right by your mouth and you're much more likely to drink water throughout the day if you have that mouthpiece I've found. And you can put that in the freezer the night before and have your water nice and cold. When I was pregnant with my second child, I did a lot of outdoor hiking, and I would always fill it with ice water because it was July and I was pregnant. <clears throat> and even that on my back helped keep me cold out that cold on that bag. Then I'm gonna go over some things that I carry. So I always have a first aid kit in my vehicle, and then I have smaller ones that I keep in my pack. I carry Benadryl, so, if you have an allergic reaction or if you're bit by a snake, it's just good to have Benadryl. Some people suggest the chewable children's Benadryl and pop a couple. And then it's a fine line between overpacking and being miserable with how much stuff you had and not being prepared. And so I like, these are the mini size granola bars and that's just enough to get you through. These are new, all these smaller sizes. I used to carry these big ones and eat half at a time just because half was the perfect amount. And then SPF chapstick. You don't think about your lips, but your lips are really thin skin and sensitive. So put some of this SPF on. Wet wipes also. So these are single package wet wipes. They make these, it's called Ivy X 
and it's poison ivy remover, basically. So you can, if you brushed up against poison ivy, or even if you didn't, but you're very sensitive, you can rub your skin with some of the IVX. This is, basically makes like a Gatorade mix in your water if you need some sugar, if you're running low, and then some hand sanitizer. And we're gonna go over what to wear sunscreen and bug spray wise. <clears throat> so if you wanna hold and I'll demonstrate. So I keep Oops. some smaller ones in my car at any given time, uh, just to have in case you forget. But these you don't wanna leave in your hot car all the time it does make them so that they're not, they're not going to repel the sun or insects and arachnids, arthropods. Um, so you do want to replace them and they do expire. So check the expiration dates on those, but you don't want to keep them in your hot car more than one summer really. I use high SPF on my face. I apply it every day before I get ready. And you do want to reapply on this. A lot of people, myself included, like the natural and it's lemon and eucalyptus and different brands make this it does smell good uh, if you're going out here or in a lot of places in Oklahoma you're going to want something with DEET and the natural ones don't have the if I'm wearing short sleeves this is something I'll spray on my skin where I'll spray DEET on my clothing and the family the these brands with the smooth of the off I like on my skin. I don't like the oily or the smell. Then there's the higher strength off. And when I lived in South Carolina, I heard a rumor that the Skin So Soft from Avon worked really well on gnats. So if you're out on the water, gnats can be more of a problem. They call them no -seums. And these smell good, not really fragrant, but they smell good. They're from Avon and they work to repel those gnats. And it can be, the Skin So Soft is made, it's like a mineral spray for when you get out of the shower or the bath, but you can spray it on in the morning when you're getting ready. And then they make the actual bug guard and um, sunscreen. So this one is insect repellent and sunscreen, two in one. And it's a nice bottle to take like in your beach bag if you're going out or in your backpack if you're going hiking. And then there's, there's just all different kinds of sunscreen and bug spray. You can find what works for you. You're going to want to wear a deodorant that is not super scented. So something like this Arm & Hammer says unscented. That's what you want. And when you are finished, hopefully you did not get bit by anything. You did not get poison ivy. Also wearing pants helps protect from poison ivy and poison oak. But good old fashioned calamine. I don't find this super useful, but other people swear by it. So I use it just in case. And then this Benadryl gel, it helps and you can keep it in the fridge. Sarah keeps hers in the fridge. So that's a great idea. It's almost like an aloe vera. So it helps on uh, poison oak and ivy, insect bites, sunburn, and even little cuts. So this might be something you pack if you're going camping because it, it helps with all of those different ailments things you don't want. Don't wear these and don't wash your clothes in really fragrant um, laundry detergents because these are meant to smell good and be strong and that's not what you want out when you're hiking. One, it could repel like deer and other animals you might want to see and it could attract the mosquitoes and um, the biting flies and all of that kind of stuff. So don't wear anything fragrant. And you're going to want to look for stuff that has DEET in it because the mosquitoes can carry West Nile. The ticks can carry a number of different diseases, including Lyme and Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Uh, so not only aesthetically do you not want to get bit, but you also don't because it's potential disease vectors. So if you have any questions about what to wear, what not to wear, Sarah, am I forgetting anything? I think you covered it all. Feel free to leave a note and we'll answer your comment and we'll, we'll happy to send you links on what we've purchased that we like 
and our favorite boots and everything else. So thanks for tuning in and we'll see you all on the trail soon.